In this video, we're going to be solving a system of equations. This problem has received a lot of interest in media, so I'd like to go over this with you today. All right, if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. If you don't like the video, please let me know why in the comment section down below, and let's get started. So we do have x plus y plus z, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, x to the fourth plus y to the fourth plus z to the fourth, and we're supposed to find the sum of the cubes. All right, so we have three equations and three unknowns, so it should be solvable, right? Okay, ideally. Now, let's see what we can do with this equation. This is a very interesting problem, by the way, and its solution uses a lot of good ideas, so I think this would be a good problem to look at. So, what am I going to do first? I'm going to go ahead and square x plus y plus c. As you know, when you square this, you're going to be getting six terms, right? What are they? You're going to be getting x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And then you should be getting two times the quantity xy plus xz plus yz. All right. So this is going to be our first move. Now, since we know x plus y plus z, uh, we can just square it and that's going to be 16. And we also know x squared plus y squared plus z squared, which is 6. So we can replace that. And from here, we should be getting something nice, which is xy plus xz plus yz. All right, cool. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to subtract 6 from the 16, 10, divide by 2. So that should give me something that I would like to keep because I'm going to use it later on. And that would be 5. Okay, so this kind of go, also goes along well with uh, the Vieta's formulas. Remember, we had a video on Vieta's formulas, which I'm going to link in the description below. Uh, this is basically the two-way products uh, of the roots. Okay, cool. So... I have this now, and I have x plus y plus c and everything else. Now, notice that we also have x fourth to the x to the fourth plus y to the fourth plus z to the fourth. So that kind of tells me something. What does it tell me? It tells me to square this expression here. Awesome. What happens if I do? Well, let's see what happens, right? Let's do and see. So if you square this, it's going to be just similar to the other one, but you're just going to square everything. So it's going to be like x to the fourth plus y to the fourth plus z to the fourth plus two times. Instead of x, y, you're going to get x squared, y squared, so on and so forth. Okay, same idea. Awesome. So we set that up. Now, one thing to remember here is that we do know the values of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, and it's given as 6. Great. So 6 squared is going to be 36. Do we know x to the 4th plus y to the 4th plus z to the 4th? Yes, we do. That's going to be 8. Great. Okay, and then what do we have? We have everything we need pretty much to find this, right? So what we can do is we can do something similar here and isolate this expression, which is x squared y squared plus x squared z squared plus y squared z squared. And if you subtract uh, 36 minus 8, that's 28 divided by 2, you're going to get 14. Awesome. This is another useful expression for us. Now, we got to do something else. Okay, what's next, right? Well, we got to deal with the cubic, right? Uh, but we can associate these as well. So it's uh, kind of up to you how you want to do this. You know what? I'll probably just expand the cubic for you because that way you'll see why this is helpful. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Now, how am I going to, well, am I going to cube x plus y plus z? Well, I could do that, but I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to use a really nice identity, which you should definitely, definitely know. And this, it's really cool. Okay, cool. Let's go. x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed minus 3xyz. I think we had a video on this one too, or something similar like this. Uh, this is factorable. And actually, as a polynomial, this is divisible by x plus y plus z. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it doesn't look like it, right? But we can prove it. Uh, I'm not going to do it right now, maybe in another video, but uh, yes, this is divisible by x plus y plus z. But what is the other factor, right? You might be asking like, okay, that other factor can be written as a sum as well as just a polynomial. So I'm going to write it that way. So x plus y plus z multiplied by x squared plus y squared plus z squared, which makes sense because we do need to get the cubes, right? So we're going to multiply the x, y, z by their squares. So, but not only that, we also need some terms to Take care of the negative 3xyz also to make sure that some terms cancel out. And that's going to proceed like this. Minus xy, minus xz, minus yz. Beautiful. Now, this is the relationship we're going to use because we do need x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed. But here's the thing. 
we know x, y plus x, z plus y, z, we do know x plus y plus z, and we do know x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So everything is good on the right-hand side. But on the left-hand side, there is something problematic, and that is x, y, z. Where is that going to come from? Well, if you relate these two equations, then you're going to know what I'm talking about. So let's save this guy here for now. Let's go ahead and frame it anyways, but save it for future. And now what I'd like to do is, I'd like to use this equation and this equation together. All right, cool? All right, nice. So what I'd like to do is, I'm going to square xy plus xz plus yz. Why? Because I want to get the sum of their squares. Obviously, there's a good reason, right? So, but this is going to give us something real nice. So when you square, just like the other formulas, you know, the other expressions, same formula, x squared, y squared, x squared, z squared, plus y squared, z squared, plus two times the quantity. Now, you're going to multiply first and second term, you're going to get x squared, y, z. You're going to multiply the first and the third, you're going to get y squared, x, z. You're going to multiply the third, uh, second and the third, you're going to get z squared x, y. Awesome. Sorry, it's a little messy writing, but hopefully that'll do. Now, x, y plus x, z plus y, z is equal to 5. So 5 squared is equal to 25. This is 25. And we, knew, we do know this as well. Right? This is 14. Nice. Okay. Plus, plus. Now, what can I do here? Well, I have a common factor, which is x, y, z, right? So I can go, go ahead and pull it out. If I do pull it out, something nice happens because inside the parentheses, you should just be getting x plus y plus z. Isn't that beautiful? Everything falls into place. Nice. So we do know that x plus y plus z is equal to 4, right? So this is 4. All right. Awesome. And so that's going to give me 8 times something. Cool. Then I'm going to subtract 14 from 25. That's going to give me 11. So I'm going to get 11 equals 8 x, y, z, which means x, y, z is equal to 11, 8. Well, things aren't always that nice, right? I mean, obviously, x, y, z are not necessarily integers, so their product is not an integer. Okay, I, I was going to make it integers first, but then I thought some people are going to be guessing, and I don't want that. I wanted to prevent guessing, that's why. Okay, cool. So we do now, we do have x, y, z, which pretty much means that we have everything we need, right? Because now I can use this equation. Well, what do you have? x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed. So that's what I'm looking for, right? Minus 3xyz. So I'm going to multiply this by 3. That's going to give me 33 over 8. And I'm going to subtract it from the sum of the cubes. And on the right-hand side of the expression, as you know, you're going to have x plus y plus z and then square, and then minus that. So let's see what those values are again one more time. Okay, x plus y plus z is equal to uh, 4. So this is 4, okay? Let's write that down. The sum of the squares is given as 6. This is 6. And the x, y plus x, z plus y, z is equal to 5. So this is just going to be 6 minus 5, which is 1, which is good, because then we don't have to worry about it. This is 4. So in other words, this should equal 4. Beautiful. And what does this mean? It means that we are almost done. Okay, cool. So now we have x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed is equal to 4 plus 33 eighths. And if you make a common denominator, that should be 32 plus 33, which is 65 over 8. And that brings us to the end of this video. All right. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Happy New Year to everyone. I hope you enjoy 2021 and hopefully it's going to be a much better year. Take care. Bye-bye.